Hello YouTube, so as promised this is the video where I discuss the more reviewy part of installing the EK Waterblocks M.2 and VMA heatsink and uh, I have a couple of things for you here but first here are the temperature uh, numbers like first you can see the idle um, scores which are the idle temperatures which is first it says the storage in idle was 42 and after it was 41 and this is like the, the actual memory module part and in load it was 69 before and then it dropped all the way down to 55 so that's a pretty significant drop but what I find the most interesting is actually the controller because the controller part uh, which handles all the read and write operations that is what's going to hit a ceiling and cause the drive to throttle and as you can see before I had an idle score of 72 and after installing the heatsink it dropped all the way down to 46 degrees Celsius um, but what's even more significant is under load it is uh, it was 105 and it dropped all the way down to 72 degrees which means that it is not going to cause any throttling anymore and I think that that will be even more obvious when I show you the actual performance numbers here so before I show you the performance numbers let gets, let's get into the temperatures um, this is for the controller as you can see the uh, I had it fixed for 105 degrees because that was as high as it would go uh, without the heatsink like all the way up there and you can kind of see that it's hitting the ceiling and then it has to thermal throttle just to maintain the temperatures and then it kind of tapers off like this curve uphill here is under load I used the auto disk mark for uh, the load figures and as you can see it keeps climbing and then it just hits the 105 and then it has to throttle in order to keep the temperatures and once the test is complete it kind of tapers off and here is the same graph but with the EK water blocks and VMA heatsink installed and as you can see it doesn't go all the way up like this is way down uh, even under heavy load like it doesn't struggle at all to keep the temperatures and then it kind of tapers off but not as much because it doesn't have very high temperatures um, to fall down from and I will show you now how that impacts performance so here we have the performance um, and as you can see, especially on the read speed, this was before the heatsink is installed. It's kind of settling down to 1400, 15, 1400, something like that. Uh, the write speed is going to be a little bit all over the place, as is the nature with these benchmarks, because no matter how many background processes you close down, there's always going to be something to interrupt the read speed, because that's the most common operation of the drive. So, um, I think the read speed, you can pretty much disregard that, but look at the write speed. It's about 1495, 1459, it struggles to keep there. But then we move over to the results when the heatsink is installed, and you can see a much more consistent profile. Um, like, it keeps to 1600 all the way up to 64 megabytes and the write speed is also more consistent even though it is a little bit all over the place but that's to be expected when it's read speed because like I said um, yeah here you can see it uh, side by side but like I said when it's read speed you you gotta expect that it's gonna be a bit over all over the place because well things and different processes wants to read from the drive so that is what you can expect but as you can see it definitely make a difference 
and from 105 degrees to 72 degrees on the controller that's to me that's insane that's like a 30 degree drop and then some so for me it was definitely worth getting the heatsink it's a pain in the ass to get on there and you're worried the entire time that oh my god i'm gonna break the drive but ultimately it was fine so I would actually recommend this, like here you have the plain numbers, uh, so don't believe the marketing hype, see for yourself, um, especially on the right speed, which is what you uh, will be seeing the benefit in mostly, because here, if you look, if we zoom in, you can kind of see that already from 32 kilobytes and all the way down, it has to taper off and go slower because it's throttling whereas here it's pretty much a straight line all the way from 32 kilobytes and down which is around 1650 megabytes per second so that's really impressive and it does show that at least for the Samsung 960 uh, Evo NVMe that little copper adhesive tape that they're using I'm Pretty sure that it helps compared to not having anything at all, but on the other hand, like compared to installing an actual heatsink on the drive, it makes uh, a lot of difference when you do that. So I hope you guys found this uh, review or whatever you want to call it helpful. And if you like 8-bit music, I do make that sort of stuff. I have put a link in the video description, so feel free to check that out. Like, comment, subscribe, share, watch the video again, and tell your friends. Um, see you next time. Bye.